Welcome to this brand new video. In today's video, we're gonna install the .NET 6 SDK on this brand new Apple M1 Max uh, MacBook Pro 16 inch yeah, notebook. So for this purpose, we'll jump over to Safari and navigate to the download page of .NET, which you can find at .NET.Microsoft.com uh, slash download, right? So, we're gonna head over here. Um, the current version is 6.0.1 and we're gonna install the ARM64 architecture uh, for our Mac OS. If you are on an Intel machine, you have to choose the x64. All right, now we are waiting until the download is completed. After the download is completed, just double dab on the uh, package file, go through the, the installation, type in my local password and install the software. After the installation is complete, we will run a simple web API demo application with .NET 6 and uh, C Sharp 10. Right, so the installation can be moved to the bin. And just to verify that the installation was complete, head over to the terminal and type in .NET. And if you get this kind of message here, you can see the .NET is installed. Otherwise, you will get an error lag. Let's just um, pretend that I have written .NET. In this case, it's missing the D, but yeah, I think you get the idea. You will find the command is not found. If the installation is successful or was successful, uh, you get those options how you use it. Before we continue with the regular video, I just want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. So I always get asked whether you're interested in joining Skillshare and the reason is simple. I want to learn more things, I want to get better at the things I do in the love. And for this purpose, I highly, highly suggest that you will try out Skillshare and get a free month with this video. And just look at the channel script toolkit from Christian Heimann. I talked about this in my previous video. This guy is a principal program manager at Microsoft and he really, really gets very deep into the JavaScript language and into certain techniques where it can be better. I really believe that these courses will help you to be a better programmer and to get more work done, to get the work done more professional, to be better at writing tests at quality insurance and in general, just to be a better programmer than you were yesterday. So to the first 1000 people to use the link in the comment below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So I highly, highly recommend to try out this platform. And now back to the regular scheduled video. All right, so I like always to do, what I always like to do is to create a dedicated folder for my program. So I just go into my documents, make a folder like dev and move into the dev directory which is already existent, right? So I have done some work previously. Uh, .NET, let's call it .NET demo. We move into the .NET demo folder. All right, now the installation is complete. We can head over to the .NET CLI thing that we're gonna use, right? So we will use the new command and with new command, you can choose from a variety of templates. In our case, we just going to be looking for the web API, which is the ASB.NET Core Web API part. So we go right there, .NET, new web API. If you don't provide a name, it will use the name from the parent folder. So uh, we, we hit enter and now, yeah, the template is going to be created. And we do see we do get some controllers, a program whatsoever. Now, if you open our program with Visual Studio, I trust the offers, sure. Let's just make all things a little bit larger. Perfect, yeah, sometimes you, you have to look how you can work with the editor. The first thing that will come into your mind, similar to the minimal APIs, is that the program shares look a lot more like Express shares in the front end world. You don't have a class, a namespace. You just have um, variables, you just have um, method calls, and that's it, yeah. So it's, it's, it looks very informal, if you're familiar with, with .NET in the previous version. So 
you just configure your controllers, your swagger, and your swagger generation, your swagger UI, HTTPS redirection, authorization of the maps controller, right? And then you hit app run, and that's everything you have to do. Uh, the controller itself looks very familiar. You have an API controller, which is totally fine. You have your route, yeah, route. Uh, the controller in this uh, part means that the weather forecast or a slash weather forecast is our route to our controller. So that's a, yeah, a placeholder. Um, we've got a string array, static and readout list, so it's going to be modified in the constructor. And then installations, we do get an iLogger interface, which um, passes the, the current class. And that's it. We've got the name, get, and everything should be working. So if you go over to our terminal, and we hit .NET watch, which is the equivalent to, to our debug session, now we do see that Hot Reload is enabled. Hot Reload is a new feature in um, yeah, .NET 6. So now that we have um, our HTTPS redirect enabled, you will be prompted for the local user that those things are, are be passed in the local keychain. I'll get an error because the, the certificate is not that trusted. You can mute a certificate, it's a local host certificate, sure. And we're gonna proceed to visit the site. You have to confirm because, yeah, MacRae thinks this is a site um, who potentially could harm you or um, steal data from you. But we know we already, it's our own application, so we don't have any issues with that. And now we do see that here we get a, a Swagger endpoint, which is on Swagger uh, slash Swagger, and our forecast endpoint, which can be easily uh, tested via the execute uh, button right there. But as you guys probably know, you can jump over to a new tab and type in URL hit weather forecast and you do get data back. Since those data are generic or randomly generated. So if you close down the terminal, you can see here that those data or the five entries have randomized data in it. So every time we hit or we consume the API, the data is completely randomized. And yeah, so you can't use those data to compare. All right, yeah, and that is the easiest way to create a web API for .NET 6, right? Just install the .NET CLI, uh, hit uh, .NET new web API, and everything is generated for you. You get a program set up. Um, it does the minimal things. Um, very good is that the HTTPS redirection is automatically added. So if you want to use this with HTTP only, which of course we do not recommend, but it's possible. Just remove this line you can um, access on this port. Now you see, if you start the application, you get um, hosting where those applications are deployed with the port and the protocol, and you can consume it from there. Um, but keep in mind, if you use the redirection and you go to the HTTP port, you will be automatically redirected to the HTTPS port. The rest is pretty much the same, like in previous versions, the app settings, Right now it's only the logging and the allowed hosts um, configured, but you can put in there any connection strings, any other data. That's it, that's the complete application. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this very quick, very fast video. If you just want to know anything additional or anything specific about .NET 6 and the, yeah, the general .NET world, just let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.